I'll do, I'll go through a bunch of slides, I'll do some demos, um, bring up some, some of our toolkit and show you how things work. Just a quick show of hands, who's used Globus here? Who's familiar with it? So about half, that's pretty good. Okay, good, so uh, my intro won't be, uh, uh, it'll, it'll be a little basic for some of you, but um, I'll try and dig in a little deeper as well. Um, my name's Greg Naraki. I'm with the University of Chicago. I'm the newly minted um, director of customer support, uh, customer engagement. So I take care of some of our new subscribers and come out here and meet some of our uh, uh, users as well. So um, you just saw this slide. I love, so in one, one sense, I, I hate following Eli because he's one of the best presenters I've ever seen. And, um, but in some sense, I really like following him because it really tees things up for me. And uh, you know, you saw this, this uh, the the science DMZ that he that that he uh, detailed. And as our uh, patriarch Ian Foster likes to say, um, congratulations, you've got a science DMZ. Now what? And so the what is, you run Globus on your DTNs, of course. So um, that's what we'll talk a little bit about today. So where, where did Globus come from and, and why is Globus here? And you know, I, I think we've all seen this and we've, we've all uh, probably caused it. And um, you, you know, there's, there's a reason that this exists though because in some sense it's fairly effective, right? Uh, people go out and go to, go to Best Buy. We were just talking about that yesterday. Go to Best Buy and buy a bunch of stack of uh, USB drives and then deliver it to their uh, instrument and say, here, put all my data on this. I'm going to stuff it in my suitcase and take it home. So, you know, what's really the problem that we're trying to solve here? And it's, you know, how do we move these mass amounts of data? How do we share the data with other people? How do we make it availability for discovery so other people can to look at it and, and grab it and, and reproduce that data? And so what we came up with with Globus was fast and reliable data transfer, sharing, publication, and discovery directly from your own storage system, storage that already exists, via software as, as a service, using your existing identities. And we'll dive in a little bit about what this all means in a minute. And you notice I, I, I crossed out the big there. Um, one of the kind of misconceptions about Globus is, well, it's only good for big data. You only use it for big data. Well, with the, you know, Globus is, um, is a great tool for lots of collections of small files or, you know, just the fact that it's reliable, it's got encrypted transfer, you can monitor your transfers, you can record your transfer so you know what went on, you have a record of what happened. Globus is really a pretty good tool for data transfer in general. Um, you know, and the other reason that I cross that off is, you know, one man's ceiling is another man's floor. So what does big, big mean to you? So Globus really enables campus bridging with and beyond campus boundaries. And so what do I mean by that? And I'll present a few use cases here to show you what I mean by that. So one common use case for Globus here is taking data off your local workstation and sending it up to your campus cluster, doing some analysis on it and, and, and bringing that, those results back so you can take a look at the analysis. Everybody's done that, seen that. That's probably Globus's sweet spot. There's also bridging to your national cyber infrastructure, things like uh, these, you know, the big clusters and uh, exceed your science gateway model, right? So all these science gateways, or most of them, most of the science gateways run Globus. So you can take your data using Globus, send it up to your science gateway, do your analysis there, bring it back to campus. The other application that we see, the other use case that we see quite often is getting data off of instruments and sending data uh, from the instruments to an analysis store or uh, just your uh, low cost store, Amazon, uh, cloud-based store, whatnot. And you know, the, the, what we've seen here is the great thing about Globus is, and I'll show you some of the, the, the tools, is it's, it's automatable. You can, you can, uh, it's scriptable, right? You can set cron jobs to do things. You can automate these tasks, which is great for instrumentation. And um, one of the other questions that we get asked, but a lot of these instruments just run Windows, right? 
And we've got a version of Globus, Globus Connect Personal, that people think, well, you just run that on your laptop. We've actually implemented it on several instruments as well. So I'll show you a little bit about Globus Connect Personal in one of the demos that I do. The other um, application for Globus is bridging to your collaborators, right? Making those files available. You've done some research, you've got some amazing data and you needed to share it with your collaborators on other campuses. Well, you can create a share and we'll do that too. We'll set up an endpoint, create a share and share with a collaborator. And then also bridging out to the community, the public. You know, how do you take this data? How do you publish it? How do you make it available for search, discovery, and uh, uh, so, so other people can, can get at your data? So we've got a um, popular slide that we show here and showing those basic use cases of Globus. When you think about Globus, you often hear transfer, share, and publication. And this slide highlights some of those. So in the transfer model, in fact, here's my instrument transfer model, the researcher initiates a transfer request or it's automated and the data is sent up to that compute facility reliably and secure, securely, reliably in the sense that we do check summing, we make sure that all the files there when it gets to its destination securely, we've got encryption for it and I'll demonstrate this in our, uh, as we go through Globus, the, the online demo. And then the share component. So um, in the share component, the researcher is selecting those files in a select set and says, well, I want to share this particular directory with a, a group or an individual. So I'm going to set my permissions or I'm going to uh, set my share and give a, uh, a, a secondary a researcher at another campus access to that. So Globus controls the access to those files on the existing storage. And what it does is when the collaborator logs in and gets access to it, it allows this person to act on this person's behalf within a limited scope that that researcher has set up. So I wanna grab these particular files and bring them down. No need to set up an FTP server, no need to set up accounts on that machine. Globus handles all that. Then there's the published component. And the published component really is, um, you know, I think of it as an extrapolation of both the transfer and share, um, where the researcher will assemble that data set, add metadata to it. You can add in optional curation for it. And then that data is made available so peers, collaborators, other people out there can search on that data, discover that data, download that data, Again, all within the constraints that the curator decides to put on that data. And so, you know, I think of it as an extrapolation of transfer and share with metadata, rules for the input of that metadata, curation if desired, uh, access rules for the data, and then the search and discovery component. And the great thing about this is it all happens within a web browser and the demo I'll do will be the web browser. And although I've seen, um, I've been in the back there and I see everybody with their command line, don't worry, we've got command line as well. Um, <laughs> as well as an API set, I'll go into that. And uh, access to any storage, POSIX based storage, I'll talk about some of the storage systems that we, that we uh, sit on top of. And using your existing identities, and this is important, especially in the sharing construct where you don't necessarily need a Globus ID to do th these things. If you've got an in common login, if you've got an ORCID ID, uh, Google ID, those are all credentials that allow you to log into Globus. Okay, so why use Globus? Well, it's simple, it's web-based, a nice simple UI, looks the same on all sorts of different systems. Um, it allows you sharing, easy access to all your collaborators so you can make your data available quickly and efficiently to them. It's reliable. Um, I mentioned that it does the check summing so the f you know all the files delivered when it gets to the end. Um, and it's also fire and forget, which is pretty neat because you can set that transfer if the network connection goes away and then comes back, we pick right back up. Um, I, do, I, I actually use uh, Globus 
use Globus myself, and I use Globus Connect Personal on my laptop, and sometimes I'll start a transfer on my laptop, close the lid, and go to work. And then when I get on my network there and plug back in, everything fires back up and it keeps downloading off my laptop. It's also maximized for your WAN throughput. We just saw the Science DMZ. We've got some, a uh, couple of knobs that you can twiddle to play with that uh, tuning of the network, and I'll show you a little bit about that. Um, but it's, it, you know, any, give me your network and we'll saturate it. Uh, operational efficiency, it's a software as a service model, runs on the web browser, and it's highly automatable. I talked about the command line, I'll do a little demo of that. We've also got REST APIs. Everything that we do in our web browser, we expose APIs for. So if you've got your own science gateway, if you've got your own portal, you can use our APIs to do globus -y things within the construct of, of that portal. And most importantly, an access to a large and growing community. And the, the thing I really emphasize here is all our folks internally, our developers are all scientists. And you know, they, they understand where you are and they know what you need to get done. And so um, you know, they, they've architected this in a way that they would like a tool to be used. And so, you know, not only do you get access to the community of Globus users, but you've got access to our developers who are also users themselves. And speaking of that community and our wonderful developers, uh, we've also got fantastic documentation. So I, anything you, uh, you need, you're wondering about Globus, go here first, because we, we uh, probably have documentation on it. Uh, it's amazingly, it's, a re it's really well written, very easy to understand. We've got some really neat guides and how-tos. We recently put in the how-to section, we put a bunch of videos. So the demo I show today, we've got videos showing you all those things. Um, so, you know, I encourage you to go to the, our, our docs page first, uh, our a docs on the APIs, all, everything in Globus very, very well documented. So a couple of things I want to talk about first before I go into the demo of Globus. And one is an endpoint. You'll hear that mentioned a lot in Globus. And an endpoint is simply our store abstraction. A transfer, a Globus transfer, goes from endpoint A to endpoint B. And so, yeah, so when you hear the word endpoint, it's just think of it as a storage area. And you'll see in your endpoints, you'll see your directory structures and everything in there. So when you hear endpoint, not too complicated, just a file system, a storage abstraction. Um, you say, but I don't, I, I'd like to use Globus and I don't have any endpoints. Well, there's demo endpoints available. We've got tutorial endpoints out there that you can read and write from. And we've also got our, I'm sorry, Eli's got the ESNet test endpoints. They're really neat because they've got a bunch of different types of file sizes on there and you can use those, great for testing. So when you set up your endpoint and you wanna do some performance testing, go to these ESNet endpoints, which he's got scattered all over the world and do some file downloads. Then there's Globus Connect Personal, as I mentioned, turns your laptop into an endpoint. Um, I'll actually go through an install of Globus Connect Personal to show you how quick and easy it is. Speaking of Globus Connect Personal, runs on um, the popular three. The installers don't require admin access. There's zero configuration, although you can go in there and mess with it if you want. Sometimes I go in and I configure it so I force it to a particular directory structure on my laptop. It auto updates and it handles all your traversals through your NATs and, and firewalls and networking. So uh, it works just flawlessly. The other thing I want to talk a little bit about is a Globus, the concept of an identity and the concept of a Globus account. So, you know, I, I have many different hats, right? I've got my, my Globus email and my Globus identity. I actually, if you, if you want, you can go and create a Globus ID. Not necessary to log into Globus. The reason I have one is my Globus ID um, do, has some administrative privileges, so I often log in as that so I can do administrative things when I get a customer calling and saying, hey, this isn't working, go take a look at it. So um, I'm also got my University of Chicago ID. 
And then I've got some, I've got my personal ID, and this doesn't even include my Argon IDs, my Google IDs. These are just kind of a, a, a collection of IDs. Well, the neat thing about Globus is, is you can actually link identities within Globus. So now, when I set up my account, and a, a Globus account is simply a collection of linked identities, when I set up my account, and if I log into Globus using my University of Chicago credentials, these credentials travel right along with it. So I can do my Globus, uh, I can get to all my, my, my Globus uh, endpoints that are, were built under that ID, I can get at my University of Chicago ones. The other reason that, that I'm talking about the identities here is because when I do the demo, um, I use this as a separate identity. So um, I, I will go and I will share from my data here to this person, completely separate. I don't have these linked in. Um, that's a separate guy. So we'll go ahead and, and do a demo, and I'll probably sit, and it's kind of hard here, but I'll, I'll figure it out. But this is where it all gets started. This is our globus.org webpage. It's our top level webpage. You just go there and you click log in and away you go. So let's go ahead and do a demo, do some transfers, set up some shares, and show you how easy it is to use Globus. So as I mentioned before, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna log in with my University of Chicago credentials. Continue. Now you notice what it's doing is it's not, now it goes out to the University of Chicago. So it's going out to their CI login page and I'm getting my credential, I'll, I'll verify my credentials there and then it'll do a token exchange, come back and I'll be verified into Globus. Okay, so here we are. We're, um, we're in with our, our web application, we're into the Globus transfer console here and I'm gonna bring up the account page here because I can show you, here I am. Here's my linked identities. I've got my Globus ID linked in with my University of Chicago ID. So now this is my account. This is what I'm logged into. I can do anything with these credentials and these credentials now within Globus. Um, the other thing that I want to show you, and what's great about that is if something hinky goes on with one of those IDs, you can unlink them. So you can get them out of there and separate them. The other thing that's neat about this page is the consents. So um, Globus uses its authentication system to do various things. The web app obviously is one of them, but I've got some other things that I do with my Globus consents. Again, if something hinky goes on, if I think something's wrong with one of those or, if I, or something's been compromised, I can go in and I can go in and I can get rid of those, um, those consents. So now my Globus account is no longer associated with that. Okay, so let's go back here to my manage to transfer files. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna log into, I've got an account on Midway, which is our cluster at University of Chicago, and it runs Globus Connect server on it. And so by nature of having an account, I've got an endpoint. This is, I, no, I didn't set this up, I just got my Midway account. Lo and behold, go there. And there we go, I'm, I'm, that's my directory structure on, on Midway. If I go and log into Midway, I'll see exactly that. So I'm gonna go to here, and I'm gonna go to one of uh, Eli's fine endpoints, and I'm gonna grab that file and highlight it, hit the arrow over there, you can see fires off my connection, bam, done. And if I go here and refresh that, you'll notice the file's now over there, the 10 megabyte file. The UI's pretty like you'd expect, common file pickers, you can select multiple files. You can even go in and you can control here with the little hamburger menu that, that everybody seems to miss, but I can go ahead and delete that file. You'll notice it allows me to give a, a label here, and you'll see I'll do the label in one of the transfers. Um, the important thing about the label is there are um, synchronous operations within Globus and asynchronous operations. And the asynchronous operations are like transfer, fire and forget, um, delete, delete, hope it happens. And you can give that a label so you can go and check it and say, oh, did that really happen? What happened with this transfer? And I'll show you a little bit on the console there. And when it's, uh, instead of looking for a transfer UUID, it's great to look for that name instead. But I'm just gonna go ahead and delete it there. So now, if I wanna fire off a little bit bigger file, that one gig file, I can uh, 
give it a file name, or a, a transfer name, sorry. And there's some other, um, there's some other options here within Globus. You can, I can sync, and that's obviously at the directory level, where I'm only going to transfer new or changed files. I can delete files that aren't on the, uh, that on the destination, that aren't on the source, to mirror that directory. I can pr preserve the modification time. Um, verify the integrity after transfer. This is clicked by, um, by default. This is where we do our check summons to, to make sure that everything happened hunky-dory. Or I can encrypt the transfer as well. So let's go ahead and do that and fire that off. And you'll notice I've got a tr the transfer request here. And I can go in and click that activity. And look, I've got a big file there. And I can take a look and see what's going on with it. If I click on big file, I get an event. Oh, the transfer just completed. So that one gig file just fired off like that. Um, that's the problem with Globus. It's hard to demo because it's so fast. Uh, sorry, question? Uh, what kind of overhead is there on encrypting the uh, it's MD5, so right now we're looking at other um, checksumming schemes. So it's whatever, it's how, how fast can the MD5 checksum, right? Sorry, stop me at any time with, with questions. I tend to, to rip through. So you can see different things about this transfer. You can see um, uh, when it requested completed times, different files directories, the effective speed I just got out of it. So lots of things you can dig down into um, into that transfer to see what happened. Okay, going back to transfer here. Um, let's see, what else, what else am I gonna demo here? Oh, we've got um, bookmarks, which is nice and handy. So if I um, really like this endpoint, I can go and I can, uh, oh, that's my, my bookmarks. I can go in here and I can, I can add a bookmark. So I can say uh, Eli's data. So there it is, and if I want to go back to that at any time, I can bookmark that and just click on these several bookmarks that I have here. Here's an example of, um, so I logged in with my University of Chicago ID. You'll notice one of these bookmarks is these Globus usage reports. Those are only available um, under my credentials, uh, my Globus ID credentials, but you'll notice I'll go right there and I can bring that directory up or because I've got uh, I've got uh, the shared credentials in the account. Yes? Uh, is there some implicit data analysis and uh, compression taking place on the back end? I'm sorry, in? So there is, I think there is no compression on the front end. So <coughs> like there is no checkbox, but is, is it happening on, on the back end for the, for the actual transfer? What do you mean? The, is, the, is the transfer being compressed? Yeah, so basically is data analyzed and uh, because data needs to be read to be transferred. So, so it's, it's, it uses grid FTP, so it does everything grid FTP does. And um, so my, my answer there is no. Um, but however, you're, you've got the ability to control your concurrency and your parallelism. So you can set up multiple parallel streams, multiple TCP streams, and then you can also tweak it so you've got um, concurrency with that as well. So if you have multiple files firing off, you can tweak those and set those so you've got higher, you, you set those parameters so you can get, get faster throughput there. So it's not really compression per se, but it's a way to um, set those grid FTP parameters. I was more thinking about whether uh, to keep the load on the, the science net low, whether that's part of the, or maybe a future concept. No, no, that's the thing. We can saturate that, that network. So you gotta be careful when you start tweaking those parameters that you don't overflow that. Okay, uh, carrying on here. Um, let's see, I showed bookmarks. Okay, so let's go here and I'll, let's show you, I'll show you Globus Connect Personal. And we'll do that by logging in as my alter ego. And I don't, I'm gonna log in as my Globus ID. And I'm using that, that lower, that Naraki personal, so I'm a different account here. I'm gonna log in. And there we go. So, um, so what endpoints do I have available? So I go to my Chicago Midway. Wait, I can't get at that, right? Because my, my uh, account, my, my identity isn't linked there. So I really don't have any other endpoints. Well, so let's go ahead and let's create a Globus Connect personal endpoint. And if I go down here and I want to say get Globus Connect Personal, and I'm going to give my 
endpoint and name. Uh, let's call it, uh, actually, and generate a setup key. And then you can go ahead and download it, but I've got it on my laptop already, so I'm just going to run it. And it asks for the setup key. And I copy that setup key, and I paste that setup key. It says everything's fine. Let's see if that's true. I have to transfer files. Let's try this endpoint here. Let's search for Rocky personal laptop, click on it, there we go. So this is my directory structure right here on my laptop. It's now an endpoint. So that's as simple as it was. I just installed and uh, Globus Connect Personal, I've got a running endpoint right on my machine right here. The other thing if, um, that I often overlook is, I don't know if you saw here when I went to that, went to that endpoint, um, it's, we've got pretty good search capabilities in here. So on my endpoint, if I say, ES, net, all the ES, net endpoints pop right up here. Okay, so let's go ahead and share some data because that's the other thing that we talk so much about with Globus. And let's bring him down and bring back uh, so I've got a directory called test share here. And I'm going to create a share on my test share directory. And I'm going to call, let's see, we'll give it a name. ATP, uh, sorry. Call it uh, public demo share. Not like there are, there's probably a ton of those out there. Let's call it Greg's demo share. Probably have some of those out there too. You can give it a description so it's searchable. Greg data. And oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you can give it a description, then add, add, add keywords to it. And create that endpoint. Share in and of itself is an endpoint. There we go. So I've got that test share created. But share is no good unless you're sharing with somebody. So let's go ahead and let's share with a user. And I'm going to share that entire directory. I could hone it down if I wanted to here. But I'm going to share it with that Naraki personal guy. And right there, go ahead and share with them. You can also just put an email address in there. And if somebody, if you don't know if that person has a Globus account or, or account of any kind, and you can't find it in search, just put their email address in there. It sends them an email. You get a link. They click on the link and instructions on how to get that. Sorry, question? Point, um, what are the default, like how much can you restrict? You don't need um, super, or you don't need a uh, root access to install it on your laptop, but right. you like really restrict it to just like one folder? Yeah, so um, that's a great question. If I go here and click on, uh, there's a console that pops up here in the header, and I don't know why I'm not seeing it. Um, but you can go ahead and you can restrict. There are preferences that you can set that you can go in and restrict it down to, to directories. And if you notice, I, I do that sometimes. I've got a directory called Greg's Endpoint on my laptop. So yeah, you, you can do that. OK, sorry. So let's go. Where was I? So um, I'm going to here uh, send a message. And I am going to leave it at read only, but you can have read write permission on that if you want. And I'll add that. And there we go. I've got Naraki Personal able to access the share um, with read only permissions. I can go and click that right there and immediately revoke that, those permissions. So if you're concerned about that person getting data access. And now let's go down to that other browser. And let's search for uh, Greg's demo share. There's Greg's demo share. I click on it. There we go. There's that directory. So I shared that directory with that person. 
with that individual, there's some data. I can take that file, transfer it over, refresh that. There it is, file three. So I just shared some data from my working endpoint to a person that wasn't me. So you can do the same thing with groups as well. Um, I'm gonna go back here and you'll notice I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna go revoke that person's access. And if I go to my, refresh that, can no longer get at it because I yanked the access. So I revoke the access to that directory. You can do the same thing with groups too. You can set up groups. Um, pretty easy to do. Um, let's bring up. So here I am under my, I can set up groups, my groups. Uh, I am going to create a new group. Uh, I'm gonna create a group for all my friends. And uh, my friendly data, I spelled that wrong and I'm gonna make it available, viewable, just by the group members, and I'm gonna go ahead and create that group. So I've got that group available, and the neat thing about the groups is I can go in and I can set some things with that. So I can even create a new term and terms and conditions for that, and I can edit that and say, uh, let's see, they have to agree to, if they want that data, you must be a nice person. So if they, as long as they agree to those terms and conditions, they can get that data. I can, there's policies, so where the group is visible to, who can create subgroups under there, uh, if they can request membership only if they're invited, membership's approved automatically if they meet the policies. So let's go ahead and do that. Now let's go ahead and add somebody to that group. And members, I'm gonna, I'm of course a member, but let's give somebody, let's invite more people. And let's invite that Naraki personal character and see if he's out there. So there we go. Send an invitation to that person. There's an invitation that goes to the email. I don't have my email up right now um, because when I'm doing all these transfers, I'm also getting email notifications. So when if I have my email client up, I just these things keep popping up and it's really annoying. So you get notified of just about everything that happens in Globus. So let's go back now here and I can, so I made that available to Greg's friends. Let's go back to my data, transfer files. There's my test share, let's share it. That's set, we are going to, okay, now the share's done. So I've got that done, let's go to my endpoint. And I'm looking at my shareable by me, which is of course my demo share. Now I'm going to share it with a group, select a group, my friends. <coughs> give them read permission only, add the permission. So now that share should be uh, viewable by this, uh, uh, this group here. So let's see if that's the case. Let's go back here and pop that guy. And we're gonna look at groups here, my groups. You'll see that I have an invitation to be part of Greg's friends. Show my, I'm gonna accept that invitation I must be a nice person, of course I am. Accept that invitation, so now I'm in that group. So let's go ahead and see, can I look at that directory? There we go, the demo share. So now as a member of the group, I can go ahead and download data from that. So you can see how Globus shares data with individuals, with groups of individuals. You have full control of that. You can create subgroups, so uh, very configurable. The last thing I'll show here is the console. Oh. So the management console here, it requires a subscription. My Naraki personal does not have access to a subscription. However, my Globus ID of course does, 
And if I go to the console here, I have a management console where I can see activity on all endpoints. I can monitor these. I can look for pause rules. If I'm an endpoint owner, I can set pause rules. Like if I'm going to do some data maintenance, I can do a pause, swap out my disks, fire everything back up. Uh, I can look at tasks, IDs of tasks, owners of tasks. I can kill tasks if I want to, um, as long as I'm the endpoint owner. So a lot of things that you can do. The, the management console is pretty powerful and one of those things that uh, we give to our subscribers. So that's the extent of my demo. I've got a few more slides left. Are there any questions on what I just showed? So with Globus Personal, um, do you see much speed up over using, if you're just on some you know, cafe or university network, would you see much speed up unless you were sitting on like an ESNet? No. no. Okay. No, you know, it's, it's certainly, I mean, you may get a little bit, um, but not really. It's more for the convenience. Okay. Okay. So let's go back to those slides here. I, may, I can comment on that. I used the personal endpoint on a compute center that did not have um, Globus own plan. And there, this was the fastest solution to get data to another Globus endpoint compared to all other scripts that I had that could do parallel transfer. So, I mean, yes, it's much faster. <laughs> okay, so as I mentioned, you know, you saw the web demo, but, you know, I see all your command lines and you're probably not very impressed with that. Or, you know, you're, you're old school, uh, you, you can pry my VT100 from my cold dead hands. Uh, we've got a command line that, and I'll do a quick demo of the command line as well, um, that uh, you can use to, to do all those things that I did in the web. The other nice thing about the command line is if you're a bash scripter, it's really easy to, to do some of your automation tasks in there. Uh, we've got a fully functional REST API. I'll talk a little bit about that too. You know, you're, you're, you're smarter than me. You can do this much better than me. You've got your own portals. We've got APIs for you so you can do it yourself. And really what you're telling me, you're asking me, how can I integrate Globus into the things that I already do? That web thing you showed me was really neat, but I've already got a way of doing things. Let me do things my way. And so we kind of took a step back from that web portal and said, well, how do we turn Globus into a platform for building gateways, portals, uh, web apps, all these things that support research and education? And so the first thing was the command line putting the command line in place so you can do some bash scripting. And let me um, bring a quick demo of that up. Um, oh, here it is over here. So I can do a, um, so here I'm doing a search of all my recently used endpoints. And you can see there, did we, did we do a, there's my test data, there's my te some test data. There's my midway, so I've recently used that midway endpoint. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at, everything's done in the command line, everything's done by UUID. So it's a little bit complicated, but um, if you're scripting it, you know, you can turn that, you can variableize that. Um, let's take a look. You can just do an LS on that endpoint. There I'm doing an LS on my midway endpoint. You can see those files that I transferred over. Um, I can do a delete, okay, let's see, do I have the delete command queued here? Um, and actually, one of the handiest commands is uh, uh, Globus help. So I'm, you can use your Globus command line, and figure out where to go from there. Everything's pretty well, pretty well documented. Um, I think I did a delete here somewhere on that. I'm just too lazy to type right now. Uh, there, I'm gonna delete that, that one meg file. And now if I do an LS on the endpoint, yeah, it's gone. So you can do transfers. Everything that you can do with web interface, you can do with the command line as well. Okay, I'm bringing it going back to. Okay, that's the extent of my demo. So yeah, so we've got this great command line. It's um, open source, it's available on our GitHub. Go take it if you wanna create your own command line tool, if you wanna hack it down, make it do different things, it's available. It's also a good, really good uh, framework by which you can see what's, uh, uh, do some of your own automation. It uh, uses our Python SDK, so we've got our APIs all wrapped up in a nice Python SDK. Like I said, it's open source, freely available. 
Yes. Maybe that's a good point to answer my the question. Oh, to answer your question about no, I'll answer. I'll actually answer that later. Okay. <laughs> so, um, you know, Globus, as I said, these are all the things you saw me do: the identity, identity, identity management and authentication, some of the file transferring things. Um, you know, those are all those things inherent in the web app. We've got our REST APIs, like I said, very well documented that sit there. It's all nice and wrapped up in a, a Python SDK. So uh, all that's very well documented. You, so you can integrate those file transfer and sharing capabilities that you saw me do on the web in your own apps. You can enable um, your existing identity systems. We've got people that just use the identity system as well. And, um, to, uh, it's one of, one of the uh, portals, or I'm sorry, one of the science gateways just uses Globus for the uh, ident identity and authentication group management. So as um, Eli pointed out, uh, there are folks that have already done this. And this was a portal at um, NCAR, and it's a portal for distributing weather data. And they had uh, HTTP access to it. And as those data sets grew way up, it got that HTTP got a little bit cumbersome, so they wanted to add Globus into it. And that's when they started using our API and simply added in the ability, if you want to use Grid FTP, you want to use Globus to transfer those files, you can. So existing web portal, integrating our APIs to do things in a Globus-y way. So um, a little bit about what Globus sits on top of, we've got, we um, use the standard storage connectors for POSIX file systems. We've also got premium storage connectors. It's an extra price on the subscription. Um, uh, Amazon S3 uh, connector, we're announcing Google Drive. It's kind of in beta right now, but we're announcing it on Monday. Uh, Ceph, Spectrologic, HPSS, and then a couple more in progress. So pretty much all your high performance storage systems you can interface to, yes? For the premium storage connectors, do I only need to have access to some facility that has that connector and then can move the data through there? Or will Globus know that I have an account that can potentially root it somewhere and then does it directly from a facility? No, you would have, that facility would have to go because it's where that Globus Connect server instance is installed. Globus Connect server, so uh, Globus Connect server is um, the thing that does all the work, runs on Linux, all the popular flavors. Um, there's a nice installation guide to it. We actually do a tutorial where we do um, give everybody um, AWS instances, and they actually do installs of Globus Connect Server, and in, min in minutes they have a, a Globus endpoint up and running on an Amazon instance, so it's pretty easy to get up and running. Uh, performance and reliability. Um, a lot of times, you know, our, our heavy-duty users, our big endpoints, um, the ESnet endpoints, for instance, there's multiple DTNs per the endpoints on so multiple machines on there. You can divide Globus Connect Server, can sit on different aspects of those machines. You can hone off the security aspect of Globus Connect Server. So if you've got, um, uh, you've, you've got these various security enclaves, you can do that. We, as I mentioned, you can tune the concurrency and parallelism of those files. Again, parallelism is just those multiple TCP streams and concurrency is doing that n times. Um, we've got, you can actually go in and twist those knobs if you want, but as I mentioned, you twist those knobs too high and you're gonna saturate the network. So we've got some network use options where you can just go in and set, okay, I wanna be, I wanna have an aggressive network connection, minimal, uh, minimal um, network connection, um, and you want to you know, pound down in a minimum way. And we set these for you, and you get about 90% of, uh, of, the, uh, of the, you know, the top end ability of doing those things. So uh, unless you really know what you're doing, don't mess with these, mess with these. Um, and just to illustrate the performance a little bit, um, we're about 20 times SCP. We've demonstrated up to 100 times that. Um, and like I said, we're really capable of saturating any WAN link. You know, give us your give us your network, and we'll bring it to its knees. 
and just some more slides on some of the uh, relative performance that we've seen. Um, again, you know, ESNet and, and uh, Eli have has done a lot of this testing. Okay, so um, talk a little bit about our history and kind of your question. So, you know, sometimes when you hear Globus, some people think way, way, way back when, you know, we've had a 20 year history to the Globus Toolkit days, right? Globus, what you see here, isn't Globus Toolkit, largely based on some of the components of it, but it's really been redone. And you, know, you mentioned uh, Grid FTP and uh, you know, what's, what's happening with the Globus Toolkit. Well, you know, we're, we're no longer the Globus Toolkit guys, and our funding has been cut for that. It's gone away. It's just the end of the funding source. So we don't have the resources. We don't have the money to put at resources to maintain it. So it's not going away. It's not going to disappear. We're not going to erase it from everybody's disk, but support for it's going away. We can't, we can't maintain support for it anymore. Are there other people contemplating support for a Globus Toolkit? Yeah. Um, if you go to our web page towards the bottom, um, there's an FAQ on what's happening with and what this all means and what the end of Globus Toolkit support means. And it also gives you some alternatives. I mean, really, when you get right down to it, there's nothing that you can't do with Globus and the command line, and you're, nothing you can't do with Glo Grid FTP that you can't do with Globus and the command line. Now, it brings up the, well, actually, let me, let me go a little bit further here, and then you can drill me with your questions in a minute. So we've gone to the sustainability model, right? So we were, we were the nice open source DOE NSF funded guys. We've gone to the sustainability model, right? We've been here for 20 more years, no more funding. How can we be here in 20 more years? So what we've developed, if we, we've developed a subscription model. So with, our, with Globus in and of itself, anybody can download it. You can do download Globus Connect server and transfer free. There's no, you know, transfer is free. You can use it. Um, no questions. Um, what does a subscription buy you? A subscription buys you the ability to share your endpoints, the ability to get at Globus Pub, uh, HTTPS support coming soon, um, the management console, uh, usage reporting, priority support from our support network. Um, these are all things that require a subscription. We do have some extras to the subscription if you want a branded website um, or some of the premium story connectors are add-ons to the subscription. So we've gone to the subscription model, and most universities, most high-level institutions are now starting to subscribe to Globus. So that's how we intend to maintain the ability to go forward and be here in another 20 years. And so what, what did this all buy us? Well, it's bought us, you know, it's, we've grown up from a science project to real software. And, you know, we've got uh, great uptime, we've got, uh, 10,000 active endpoints out there, 10,000 active users. Um, you know, this, this is outdated. It's uh, over 280 petabytes transferred. So we've really kind of grown up into real software. And so who's subscribing? This is just a small subset of our subscribers. And um, so they're the ones that are maintaining and, and this is how we intend to go forward by nice folks like these. You want to drill me with, with questions that I answer them? Um, I, did, I don't have the insight into the politics behind it. I was just uh, surprised given that my general impression from the overall field is that um, things are getting more open source rather than um, less. So what I probably would have expected is that if you say, well, we stop um, the support so that everyone who wants a subscription get paid support like Red Hat does um, or the other uh, bigger open source uh, vendors, but still that the ecosystem remains open. And well, so a couple answers to that. So the, the toolkit is still, it will still be open. Uh, if somebody else maintains it, they can do whatever they want with it. The problem with the openness to Globus is we're doing a lot more things with sensitive data. And that's really kind of where our sweet spot is starting to become. So a lot of these genetic communities where, where the, the sequencing data, you know, that's starting to get very HIPAA. Um, the, a lot of the government stuff is all going FISMA. So 
we kind of have to be careful. If we start that, then we lose that. So where do we want to, you know, where do we see our future? And we see our future right now really is providing the service as, a provoca as, as opposed to providing the, soft, the source code. Not sure. Okay, oh, questions. So yeah, I have two questions related to that, or one's a comment. That's, um, I mean, there, there, there's plenty of um, open source security software, so I don't think that's really a hurdle that you want to, that you're dealing with secure things. But the second, um, the second question that I have is, so do you see um, entities besides big research um, universities being customers in the future? Yeah, it, as a matter of fact, they are. You mean like these folks that are currently subscribing? Like mostly research. I was just thinking like outside of that, like uh, like more commercial. Companies. Oh yeah, so we've got some commercial subscribers. So actually, first year to your first question, yeah, there's open source security software. There's no open source data transfer software that is HIPAA and FISMA compliant. You're not gonna find that. So, yeah, so that's kind of where we're going. Um, I'm sorry, the, the, what was the? Oh, just like where, where you see like growth oh. in, the, in the market, like outside of say academic and research and stuff. Well, I mean really our sweet spot is academia. So as long as we get those, and, and the subscription model is based on your Carnegie classification, right? So the size of the, your university, you pay a different amount. That's a fairly common model. And you know, we've got a large percentage of the R1s, um, some of the R2s, and a little bit of the R3s. We've got some of the smaller institutions as well. Now, the important thing to note is I actually did, I ran some stats the other day, and we 100% of the R1 uh, institutions use Globus. They may not be subscribers, but they all use it. And uh, in like 78% oh, of the R2s. So people are out there using it. You know, the question is, do you want to subscribe to it to be part of that ongoing support model? Do you want these, the sharing? Do you want the consoles? You know, that's up to you. Uh, for like a file synchronization, we recommended uh, checking a file size or checking the checksum. Which one? Oh, we're, we check some. Yeah, all our, our so, yeah, 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 well, that's, yeah, yeah, we use checksum, yeah. Does an institutional subscription extend all the benefits of a subscription to all of the users? Yes, anybody within that institution. Yeah, so, uh, you know, you're, it, and that's one of the other things that I'm starting to do, you know, as a part of my job is to bring, I'm searching for these endpoints because we've got institutions that are subscribers that have a ton of endpoints out there that aren't part of the subscription. People don't even know their institution subscribing to it. And you know, they want to do sharing. And they, they call complaining and we're like, well, you've got a subscription. Just let us you know, manage the endpoint and away you go. Okay, so on to some of the things that, that you all be interested in. Um, you know, join, join the community. We've got our, our documentation. The mailing lists, if you're doing any developing, uh, certainly get on those mailing lists. We've got a ton of great open source examples on our GitHub. Go there and pull stuff down, and I'll talk about some of those in a minute. And we'll all, when all else fails, contact us. Our support folks are excellent, and you don't have to be a subscriber to, to uh, use our support system. Our support folks, we have to sub, uh, respond to our subscribers faster, but um, you know, we've, they're really good at responding to anybody using Globus. So talking about some of the, the tutorials that we have, we've got tutorials on Globus Admin. Um, we've got, there's a guide for co installing Connect Server. There's some great slides out there uh, on, uh, how, on um, in, when we do the tutorial. Um, some additional helpful slides there um, on Admin. Um, automation examples. I talked about the, using the command line for automation. On our GitHub, we've got some, our professional services guys wrote some automation examples out there. So we've got uh, syncing a directory both in Bash and Python, uh, staging data up to a shared directory like what you do um, with a portal, Bash and Python, and then removing directories after files are transferred, a Python script to do that. So some great automation examples out there, open source, free, go grab them, use them, hack them up. Our API set, 
There's some good slides that we do when we do a tutorial. Welcome to grab those. These are also, not only are these on the slide, but I put them on, there's the, that GitHub that we had for this conference. So those are, um, all this is up there too. So, um, and, and it's much easier because you just go there and you can click the links. Um, so the docs on our API set, um, the, oh, the sample data portal. This is really good. If you're looking at um, to build your own data portal, we've got a sample data portal out there. It's uh, really, you can again, open source, hack it up. You can see how the authentication's done, how the transfer's done. It imitates the things like you saw in, that, uh, in the NCAR example. Um, oh, Jupyter Notebook, this is a great way to learn the API set. Uh, I don't know if you're, well, you guys are all uh, developer types and I'm sure you know Jupyter, but it's really, um, we, do, we run this as a, a kind of hackathon tutorial where we walk through the notebook and you can see uh, token exchange and you can see transfers done all within the API set, the Python SDK, pretty cool. Um, our auth API set, we've got um, kind of ditto for the whole auth. We've got uh, docs on that, helpful slides, and the code that I really refer people to are these native app examples. So if you're doing token exchange, refresh tokens, things like that, take a look at those. Um, it's a great way to, to get started and going on those. And lastly, um, we do the Globus World, World Tour. We're happy to come to your campus, talk to your RCC folks and say, hey, I want those Globus guys to come and uh, give a talk. We give web, or we'll, we'll do it as a webinar. We'll actually come to your campus. We do, um, with, the, with the world tour, we do tutorials, we do hackathons, we uh, walk through the API set, a bunch of different things. Um, programs, like I mentioned, um, I'm trying to get people to evangelize Globus within the institutions that already have a subscription. I'm trying to connect those people within the institutions that are using Globus, that don't know their institution has a subscription or aren't managing their endpoints, they're not getting the functionality out of it. And we've got a great professional services group. So um, if you've got a project that you're interested in working on and you don't have the cycles to do it yourself, but um, you've got cash, um, these guys will work for you. So that's pretty much it. I got a couple minutes left for questions. I'll stick around a little later this evening as well. Um, any questions? Answer? Okay, so Globus in a nutshell.